Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. For Kattak Tata today, we were offered a hard choice. The choice between the overnight war in the Middle East, the unprecedented, unprecedented in human history, launch of 300 plus projectiles of various kinds from as far away as Iran into Israel, towards Israel. And then the reactions and the possibilities of what might happen. That is one. That is an enormously cluttered story. There was also the BJP's manifesto, which called released on Sunday. The reason we are making a choice, we are, we are choosing to talk about the Middle East is simply because it's a lot more cluttered than the BJP's manifesto. The BJP's manifesto, if I may speak for a minute, is actually very uncluttered. It's also particularly uncluttered because it is, it, it is, it is a manifesto of continuity from what they promised in the first term and the second term. In any case, when a government is seeking a third term, it cannot, it cannot start new things that they haven't done before. It has to be a manifesto of continuity. And that is what the BJP's manifesto is. A couple of things are interesting there, but again, they don't add up to too much clutter. One, that this time they haven't talked about an NRC, National Register of Citizens. That is after they have already released notified rules for CAA, Citizenship Amendment Act, and a couple of other things as well, but nothing really which is which shows any change of direction or which shows anything radical. The Prime Minister is now speaking to various media organizations, many media organizations, and we are we are looking at those interviews and maybe tomorrow we when we when we have studied some of those more closely, we can talk about that and and bring in also the manifesto. That said, back to what is the most cluttered story of our times. The most cluttered story of our times, definitely the most cluttered story of three generations now, is the story of the Middle East. Ukraine only happened, Ukraine-Russia only happened in this generation. The Middle Eastern crisis has been on for a hundred years, starting with the dismantling of the Ottoman Empire and maybe a little bit before that. So we are not going into any of that. For that, you read my colleague Praveen Swami's writings and videos or watch his videos. What we are looking at is what happened between Israel and Iran. And first of all, I am giving you some analytical points and I am giving you some my analytical view, not opinion, but analytical view to that extent, different from the usual cut the clutter. So to begin with, I'm giving you some analytical points. I'm listing some analytical points which are distilled from the facts that are available for us. After that, I will tell you a little bit more about the technologies, the weapon systems used in this skirmish or what is a mega overnight skirmish. I will come to that in the later half of this of this episode of Cut the Clutter. Now, first of all, what did the Iranians want to achieve? What have they achieved? What, what did the Israelis want to achieve? Because everybody knew that this attack was coming. When the Israelis went to Damascus and bombed an Iranian consulate, they would have known that they had pushed the they had pushed this too far because in the past the Israelis have carried out assassinations of Iranian nuclear scientists, nuclear scientists, other officials in Iran, yes. But those are covert operations. Covert operations give both sides a place to hide. Oh, they carried out a covert operation. Maybe someday I will also carry out a covert op operation. But when it's an open operation carried out, a bombing carried out by your rival's air force in your consulate, which happens to be technically and principally happens to be and, and morally happens to be your territory. 
either you respond and if you don't respond then you are seen to be a pushover that for iran was very difficult because iran is also fighting for its own supremacy its own competitive position in the islamic world and iran is always caught in this competition with the arab side of the islamic world not so much with, with turkey although turkey it's not so it's not straightforward shia sunni not so much with turkey but with saudi arabia uae in particular and to some extent to the extent that that country matters right now it matters a lot jordan as well so for iranians now to take this lying down was was very unlikely and israel would have known what they were doing and what to expect when they hit the iranian consulate so iranians then hit back now what is the balance sheet at the end of this first of all first of all the iranian attack failed militarily it failed militar militarily because if you just look at the number of projectiles launched that is 331 missiles drones and cruise missiles these are counts from international defense press some are statements from israeli authorities some are statements from western military forces which were tracking and which were also participating in countering this attack 185 kamikaze drones 185 36 cruise missiles and at least 110 in fact now i'm seeing a count of a little bit higher but at least 110 ballistic missiles of which all 185 kamikaze drones were shot down probably they were meant to be shot down because if iran launches these drones which might take slow flying drones which might slow flying and low flying which might take 8 hours re reaching israel chances are that they will be shot down so maybe the idea was to overwhelm the israeli air defense systems or the israeli allies air defense systems or maybe or maybe this was done just for effect so that in the islamic world it would look like oh the iranians launched such a big operation i don't think nobody thinks that iranian expected that any of these drones forget many of these drones any of these drones will actually get into Israel with their ordnance that didn't happen all 185 were shot down 36 cruise missiles i should say at least 36 cruise missiles all were shot down 110 ballistic missiles that we know of of which 103 got shot down the important thing is seven did not get shot down and i will tell you something about that as we conclude this episode of katta clutter possibly up to half now we see more data coming out and you will see some tweets running on your screens from open source intelligence organizations and also all also some of the defense or military affairs websites and publications you will see some of these running it looks like possibly up to half of the ballistic missiles either failed to launch or or they dropped dead on route so they did not quite get anywhere close to their target most of the others were shot down some were shot down shot, some were shot down by the americans mostly by americans british and french forces available in the region deployed in the region the rest were shot down by the israelis as we go along in the second half as i told you i will talk to talk to you about the instruments used to shoot these down The U.S. authorities say that three of the medium-range ballistic missiles were downed by them. They were downed by the U.S. Navy's Arleigh Burke class destroyer, guided missile destroyer, in eastern Mediterranean, using Aegis ballistic missile systems to track and target these missiles, and then firing standard missile three or SM three at these ballistic missiles to bring them down. Now. all of these missiles were launched all of these missiles and drones were launched at israel only seven got through and they also caused minimal damage unfortunately one child a bedouin girl child was was injured the last reports came reports said she is not yet stable beyond that there was no there was no damage to any life and property looks like at least a couple of the missiles fell in some part of the large israeli air base in nevatim enough for the israelis then to show to release pictures and videos of f35s taking off and landing from that air, air base to make the point or at least 
to assert that the air base was still operational. It had not been put out of action. But the fact is that some ballistic missiles got through militarily. However, it's a defeat for Iran. Militarily, it's a defeat because such a large attack, almost everything got stopped. Again, militarily, this is the best advertisement for the for the air defense technologies. This is the finest example of air, air defense technologies working so brilliantly. I share with you a tweet by Tyler Rogaway, who is editor-in-chief of the warzone.com publication that we are relying on for quite a bit of detail today on the details of the weapon systems, defensive weapon systems used by the Israelis. He says in his tweet if the, that if this many drones and missiles had been shot down, he says this displays one of the greatest military technology accomplishments of an era, which means the missile defenses have become so good. Formidable David Sanger of New York Times and Wali Nasr talking with talking with Farid Zakaria, and I will share a link with you of that of, of a clip of the of, of that discussion. They are saying that what's happened is the best advertisement for air defense technologies. At the same time, while you might say that the Iran lost out militarily and Israel won militarily it is it isn't the full picture it is it isn't even half the picture because the doctrine for israel is not defensive israel is not a country that can take satisfaction with with having defended itself successfully against a hostile power because israel lives in a very hostile environment so israelis have doctrinally believed and asserted that they must raise the costs for whoever dares to attack them. They cannot sit back with the satisfaction that, de that they defended themselves successfully because that's a dangerous thing for them. To that extent, you could say that the Iranians succeeded. And I will give you a few, few analytical points on where Iranians can draw satisfaction from this. One, Iran drew the red lines. It drew the red lines that beyond a point, don't expect us to not respond. At some point, we will respond. This is not that different, although the contexts are very different. The relative powers of the two countries are very different. India, Pakistan, India is a much bigger power than Pakistan. Iran, militarily, is not at all a bigger power than Israel. Israel is a much bigger power than Iran militarily. It's a bit like at some point, just as India drew the red line for Pakistan, after Pulwama, that look, now you do something, we will retaliate. So the era when India never retaliated inside Pakistan, that era is not now over. So we will retaliate. But how successful it is or not, you can keep arguing. You can say a crow died. India will say hundreds of jesh -e muhammad militants died. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that a red line has been drawn, which means India said to Pakistan, we are not afraid of further escalation. So you thought that you had a deterrence, that there was a fear of escalation. We are over with that fear of escalation. So there is no deterrence now. That is the line that Iran has now tried to draw for the Israelis to say that, look, if you do this, we'll come and do something. If you retaliate, which they might, then so be it. We calculated on taking a risk. You also calculate on taking taking a risk. So they have gone up the escalation ladder with the Israelis and have defied them because it's out of character with the Israelis not to respond to something like this. They are now under pressure from the Americans, the British, the French, all their allies to say, don't do anything else. You, you more than got even. You are successful. You won this battle, this skirmish. The Iranians lost this skirmish. Don't, don't start anything new because even if you start something new, if you attack Iran in Iranian territory, we will not support you. We will not participate in this. That is the farthest the Americans have gone now to dissuade the Israelis. In fact, their advice would be, and I think there is some substance in that, a lot of substance is that, that Israel proved how effective its systems were and how ineffective were the Iranians. Also, these skirmishes showed that Western support for Israel remains rock solid. The Americans were there in strength, the British were there, the French were there, and most importantly, the Jordanians were there because a lot of this stuff was overflying Jordanian territory. If you look at the map, you can see that almost nothing can come from, come from Iran into Israel without overflying Jordanian territory or thereabouts. And Jordan put up its own def air defense systems and its own aircraft up in the air. 
its own anti missile systems mostly bought from the americans or given by the americans to stop many of these missiles and projectiles coming coming towards israel we know that israel and jordan have a defense treaty a mutual defense treaty but you can also imagine how inconvenient it is for a jordanian government for a jordanian regime to actually fire in defense of the israelis against an attack by the iranians a fellow islamic state in fact how difficult it is for the jordanians i will share with you an article from harrods which may, which makes exactly that point and the two paras from that article saying this i am highlighting for you on your screen could we then say that both sides achieved their purpose with this israel by showing its military prowess saying that look we can fend off 331 Uh, missiles and drones fired at us what is the big deal what do we have to worry and the iranians saying see we are the only islamic country which dare to attack israel big time the last time somebody tried doing this was saddam hussein in 1991 that was just a few ballistic missiles scud missiles but the iranians have done it at a completely different scale right now but for 33 years since no other country dare to attack israel no other state actor dare to attack israel lots of non state actors state now the iranians have shown the entire islamic world that they have the they have the guts to do it and that is something that iranians are hoping will play out well on the muslim street and increase pressure on the arab street because arab nations by and large are supporting israel or at least not supporting iran or are quiet because their allies are the west now the question now arises will the israelis retaliate or will they not now it's unlikely going by their history it's it's unlikely that they will not retaliate at some stage what stage that is is difficult for us to guess or define because there'll be pressure on them also they will see the prudence in imposing costs on iran because what have the iranians lost they have lost very cheap ordnance that they that they lobbed at israel so the total cost of all these drones cruise missiles and ballistic missiles it is it is not more than some 40 to 50 million dollars no more than that whereas every estimate of the expense involved in the defensive shield that the israelis put up to fight of these is is upwards of 1.2 billion dollars so cost to cost it is the israelis which have which have had to pay a much larger cost i'm not adding in what the americans have incurred or the british have incurred or the french or the jordanians have have incurred but there is a lot of cost on this side so for the israelis there will be temptation to impose costs on it is iran so they don't start seeing it as a cost effective tactics lob lob this stuff at the israelis they will burn billions of dollars trying to protect themselves so they will be constantly burning up their resources in defensive battles already israelis have struggled just to put up enough iron dome missiles to stop the very low technology rockets coming in from gaza and coming in from lebanon and syrian side now for them to invest in this perpetual defensive warfare with iran is going to be very imprudent for them at least that's how i suspect tel aviv will look at it how they respond when they respond how they how they now decide to deter the iranians from doing something like this in future we'll have to watch this space it may not happen right now it may not happen using conventional means like firing missiles at the iranians may or may not but something will happen in the course of time and when it happens the israelis will make sure that the world knows that this was a payback for this missile drone attack so i'll talk a little bit about it not in too much detail because if you are a nerd then you know better than me already and if you are not a nerd then maybe it's too much detail for me to bring to you on cut the clutter i leave that to snehesh alex philip our defense editor who's working on it and maybe tomorrow he will give you something of this in detail i will just tell you that the israelis have a defensive system a defensive shield an anti missile drone defensive shield that works that's based at five levels it's a it's a it's a five level defensive shield how does it work at the lower most level at the lower most level of technology also is the old stinger missile stinger missile which stops any any target that gets through the other defensive shield so it a stinger missile works up to 
15,000 feet, it works in a sizable envelope, but really something has to go through the other shields, the other four sh shields. So this becomes either against a larger system, either a weapon of last resort or a, or a good weapon against low fly flying drones coming in say from Gaza or the Lebanon side or the Syrian side and Israel faces a lot of them. So that is at the lowermost level. Along with that also is a system called Machbet, M-A-C-H-B-E-T, which in Hebrew means racket. That's again part of the short range air defense system. That is again a system that uses Stinger missiles, but four Stinger missiles and a cannon. Four Stinger missile and a Vulcan 20 millimeter cannon, usually launched on a tracked vehicle. So it's mobile. Once again, it's in the same kind of range, so it's again a part of the short-range defensive system. Then we come to Iron Dome. Iron Dome is not that short-range, it's a little bit short and medium range. Iron Dome we've seen in operation, we see pictures all the time. Iron Dome can be fired in large numbers, Israelis make it. Missile it uses is called Tamir missile, which has an active radar seeker, also has an onboard autopilot and is commanded by a data link. So again, the key with all these is Israeli systems is very good data links. It also has a proximity fuse, so it gets close to the target and blows up. The important thing is it costs about $30,000, $40,000 a pop, right? Whereas the little rocket, it may be shooting down coming from, from Gaza, maybe is not even $100 worth. And that's why each time there's a volume of these attacks, Israelis burn up a lot of these missiles and very often they run short of these and they have to replenish these. And maybe the Iranians at some point, if they repeat this, they will think of saturating the Israeli skies in such a way that, that Israelis begin to run out of these systems. Next to that is something that we haven't yet seen. Again, it, it's in the short to medium range area. That is the iron beam system. Iron beam, we haven't yet seen. Iron dome, the whole world knows about. Iron beam is a trailer mounted directed energy system. So that's a laser system. There's been a lot of speculation that one of the videos that's come out of rockets being shot down was actually a case of Israelis using the iron beam system. That has not been confirmed. However, in 2022, April, see this tweet, Naftali Bennett, who was then the Prime Minister of Israel, he said that Israel had used the iron beam system successfully in trials to shoot down a missile. And he said that this was only going to cost three and a half dollars per shot. And he said in this, th that tweet, it may sound like scientific fiction, but this is for real. The next, there is a system called David Sling, again, the medium range defense, which is which is also based on a missile, This, which is also based on a missile, it's called the Stunner missile. The system has 12 missiles. So one set, one launcher, one set of launchers has 12 missiles. Again, the missiles can go up in combination, go to a higher altitude than the regular Stinger missiles and provide you defense in a different dimension. The range of this is 200 to 300 kilometers. That's the reason we say this is for the medium range. Next, the Patriot missile that all of us know about that was used in 1991 to stop Saddam Hussein's missiles. That missile has gone through many iterations now. It's in a very different form. It's been upgraded several times over. But once again, it remains in the medium range. Now, until now, the missiles, even Patriot and David Sling, these missiles, they can stop ballistic missiles, but they stop ballistic missiles when they've entered the atmosphere and they are coming in, they are falling at a great, at a great, at a great velocity. That is when these missiles can stop those missiles. But then you know, then a lot of debris might fall on you and, and it is not that safe. The safest thing is to stop those missiles in beyond the Earth's atmosphere. And that's the reason the Israelis now have the Arrow 3 system and the Arrow 2 system. Arrow 2 system first used in 2000. That was the first missile system that the Americans designed specifically to stop ballistic missiles outside the Earth's atmosphere. This has a range of up to 2000 kilometers and this functions in on an exo-atmospheric basis, which means it stops a missile flying at whatever speed 
outside the earth's atmosphere so th to that extent it keeps the intended target that much safer and then of course the israelis have their aircraft fighter aircraft helicopters they even use f-35s to shoot down drones in fact 2021 israeli f-35s are claimed to have shot down two iranian drones which they said were directed towards israel we have a video, we'll try and run that on the other half of the screen. That said, let me come to what I said in the very beginning. That is 331 missiles, drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, drones, cruise missiles fire, fired. Most of them brought down. Most of them except seven ballistic missiles brought down, failed. And we can say the Iranian attack military operation was a resounding failure. But remember, seven still got through. Seven ballistic missiles still got through. God forbid, if one of them had a weapon of mass destruction, what, what could the consequences have been? So the lesson there is that while this shows it's a very good advertisement for anti-missile defenses and new military technologies, but the lesson also is that however good your defenses might be, it's always possible for one odd missile to get through. These are low cost weapons. These missiles are low cost old tech weapons. It's still possible for one odd to get through. And if it really has a bad warhead on it, you can imagine the consequences. So this reminds us, this underlines to us that wonderful as anti-missile defense technologies might be, Nothing is foolproof. Nothing gives you a 100% guarantee. So the best, the best strategy always is risk avoidance.